All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Give me one second. It's still spinning. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Hello, 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 a second. Okay. It's still spinning. Okay, so now. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, the Carolyn. Hi, let me see. I see your properties. Let me see if I can add you. Hold on, we're trying to figure out how to add Prophetess Melissa in here today. So we're going to have a good, good time. Just give us a second. this i think you we may have to go live with them just watching me and hearing you because i still don't see how i bring you in on this one so can you hear me Okay. Oh, on this one, on that one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. I, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome size. All right, everybody. We are live. We are live. We are live. We have some several technical difficulties going on, but we are live and we are ready for the interview with your girl Trish M. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for tuning in, uh, uh, for tuning in because we got something super, super phenomenal for you. I have a very special guest that's joining me on today is Prophetess Melissa Williams. Uh, I've been trying to get her in on this video stream uh, and it doesn't show me a link or, or anything on my page uh, at the bottom of it for bringing in a guest. So maybe that, that may be on the personal page. Uh, but yeah, so you guys can hear her. You may not be able to see her, okay? So, um, Prophetess Melissa, thank you so much for joining me on today for the interview. I'm super excited to have you. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for what God is about to release through you to share with the Amen. people. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad to be with you today. So honored to be with you this. I promise you, I am. <laughs> yes. Amen. Well, you know, we have uh, done ministry together in the past. We've done some great and, and wonderful things. I had you, I believe yeah. it was at my women's conference. I am fabulous women's empowerment conference where you came and you just brought down the house. I mean, a powerful word from <laughs> God. And then I've yeah. had the opportunity to go and support you uh, in several, uh, a few things that you were doing in the city here yeah. when you yeah. were in Birmingham area and so yes. 
Uh, so I just know I, it's just an honor to be in your presence. It's an honor to do life with you, to do ministry with you. And so I want you to share with the people who you are. I'm, I want to introduce you to them and present you to so many others on today. So can you share with everyone who you are, what you do? Just give them an overview of who Prophetess Melissa Williams is. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I am Melissa Williams. Um, I am first a mother of three beautiful children. Wow. Um, I won't give you their age and that'll tell my age. <laughs> um, but I am, I'm honored to be their mother. I'm also the CEO and founder of Melissa Williams Ministries. I'm also the founder um, and CEO of Candy Kiss Cosmetics. Ooh. Also, my publishing company called She Speaks Publishing. Uh -huh. Also, um, I'm my boutique, which is called Melissa's Cutique. Uh -huh. So I'm the founder uh -huh. and um, business owner, entrepreneur. Um, I think the Lord has graced me to be a movement in the earth. So if I was to sum it up, that's who I am. I'm a prophetic voice in the earth, which is still a movement. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, my gosh. You know, you sound like me. You are a moving and a shaking shaking and a moving doing big things for the kingdom which is amazing right so let's let me because yeah. you, you you said a lot of things so you we know that you're a minister you're a woman of god you're a prophet uh you said yeah. you have the you have a makeup a uh, line uh you have the yes. boutique uh what yes. okay so you're doing makeup what uh, tell us about the what, what you have to offer when it comes to makeup and how people can kind of uh, uh, connect with you on that. And then in, in your cutique, which I love that, what's in the cutique? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Candy Kiss Cosmetics is a um, organic lipstick line where we have lipsticks, lip stainers, also lip scrubs. Um, mm -hmm. And you can find that also on Facebook and also our website, which is Candy Kiss Cosmetics. Um, I always love to say that God has graced me to be a Black African-American woman um, who is now starting a Candy Kiss line. And so I always say to everybody, if you're looking for something that is going to last long and fabulous, don't go to MAC, go to Candy Kiss. <laughs> okay, I love it. Everything for you. Um, and as far as my publishing company, you know that I am an author of four books myself. Mm -hmm. um, and my last one being the book entitled Her, I'm Still Standing, which was forwarded by Dr. Jamal Bryan. It came out wow. in January of this year. Uh -huh. And so, of course, during the, um, during the COVID or the pandemic, we wasn't able to do our um, book tour. But that is um, my recent bestseller. So with that being done, wow. God graced me to start my publishing company, which um, we have a staff that we do ghostwriting, we do editing, we do covers, wow. layout, formats, you name it. Whatever thing you want to be done as to become a next bestseller, then you should contact She Speaks, um, and that is the publishing company um and you can find all of that on facebook and go to you can email me at any time and um we'll connect you to everybody and then of course um melissa's cutie that is my boutique that i started recently this year during the pandemic um and you can find clothing you can find my t-shirt line that i have uh -huh. where we have quote and tees that really speak volumes to people so it's when you walk in the room you don't have to say anything um your t-shirt is going to be for you right <laughs> We have t-shirts that says um, pretty preachers preach. Um, okay. We have one that says slavepreneur, which is what you and I are. Yes. That is a woman that is slaying in business and in fashion and in ministry. Um, so we have a lot of t-shirts that speak volumes for you. Mm -hmm. um, and also you can find my books online. And so we're still building it. But right now it's for um, all God's people, especially the women of God, um, that wants to wear a statement. You can go and find you a pretty dress or you can find a t-shirt for my t-shirt line. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Uh, now, are your books there? They're on Amazon, right? Your your latest one, yes. her. Okay. Yes, uh, her. I'm still standing. Is on Amazon.com. Also, the other books that I've written called After This. Mm -hmm. um, one is called The Combat, and my very first book that I wrote was entitled Doubt and Destiny Don't Mix. Yes. So all of those books you can find on Amazon. Um, um, for the latest book, you can type in my name or you can talk and type in Jamal Bryant's, Dr. Bryant's name, and that book will come up as well. Wow. You know, that first book, you I think that's the one I have, Doubt and Destiny Don't Mix. Like, this yeah, is yeah. like so, that is so prolific for right now, the times that we're yes. in with so much chaos going on and people are suspect of everything. <laughs> we don't yeah, know, right? So like, we could doubt, like, God, okay, do you hear me? You with me? You see what's going on? What we doing? You know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
So that's huge. That's huge. So I love, love, love this, right? So you're doing so much. You're so anointed. You're so gifted. You're such a woman of many, many talents. And not only that, we know that you're a woman of faith because you minister to us. You uh, 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 speak yeah. to where we are and you don't even know it. You just know you're flowing yeah. in God. And so with Absolutely. that, how, even though, because people think that we don't ever have challenges. We don't ever go any, through anything because we're always inspiring. We're always encouraging. We're always motivating. As a woman of faith, how has God challenged you to look in this year so that you could be better out in this season of your life with us going through so much with COVID-19? How are you looking in so that you could be better out in this now season? Well, it's amazing um, that you asked that question. One, I want to say um, I'm, I'm also grateful and honored to be here, but I love the title of your podcast. Mm -hmm. It is entitled Interview. When yeah. I say that, it's a phenomenal. And I know you had to get that from God because <laughs> that is just such a prolific statement within itself. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, I, I really thought about um, the name of your podcast and the question that you're asking about how can God... Um, as far as the inner me, what is he doing? So I literally define your word and mm -hmm. to really get a perspective on where I am. And if you look at the word inner, um, inner is basically something internal or something mental or spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then you say the word view, it is really the ability to see something. It is the test of our inner strength. Yeah. And so when I'm thinking about that, I'm saying, God, the inner me, you're giving me the capacity to be tested in spiritually. Mm -hmm. You're giving me the ability to see what's what the word view, you're giving me the capacity to see my inner self, meaning am I strong physically? Am I strong spiritually? Yeah, and so yeah. when you talk about the interview, what is God doing? God has given me the capacity to see where I need to come up in. And mm -hmm. basically the scripture says um, he wish above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prosper. In other words, he's saying lady, that he wants us to have a balance, the yes. interview. So he's teaching me how to balance myself being a woman Woman, a woman in ministry, a woman in business, and I can't prosper um, in, in my business arena, in the marketplace, and then my spiritual life starts to lack. So mm. he's graced me to be able to um, see where I am. Mm -hmm. um, just like anybody else, there are times on this journey when you are anointed, you will realize that anointing comes with attacks. Right. Anointing comes with warfare. Mm. And so this year has been one of the greatest years of my life prophetically, because I believe at the beginning of the year, the Lord began to say, Lady T, um, that I stand before you an open door mm. that no man can shut. Yeah. And so he said to me, that means, Melissa, not even you are going to be able to stop what I'm going to do this year. Woo. But I did not know the cost mm. of what it was going to charge me. Wow. You know, he gave me that word in 2020. He said, going into this year, Revelations 3, I'm going to stand before you an open door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no man can shut. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He said, you can't even stop what I'm going to do this year. Woo. But the price that I've paid during the pandemic, I've um, prospered in the pandemic, but I've had challenges in the pandemic. I hope I answered your question. Mm, <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You broke that thing down. Like the things that God is doing this year. No man is yep. going to be able to stop it. We see that. That's that was a personal word for you, but it's global. Yeah. It's like it's we yeah. see it, we feel it, we sense it. And one of the yeah. things that I prophesied last year was that uh, 2020. Everybody talk about vision, but God gave me something very specific. He said 2020 is going to be the year that we see and experience things like never before, like from wow, so many different areas of our life we were going to see and experience things like never before on a personal level uh, uh, on a world level on a regional yeah. level that god was doing something within us he was doing something yeah. throughout this world he was going to challenge us to really look in to say yeah. okay god no matter what's going on out here i still trust you no matter what yeah. attack i'm i'm enduring right now I still got to trust you. And you said yeah. something so powerful. You was like, you, God was giving you this stuff, but you didn't know the cost that was yeah. going to come with it. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Like, yeah. how, how do we endure the cost? 
Well, what can you tell us that are that are going through some costly things right now just to just to get that oil to run? <laughs> yeah, you know, Proverbs chapter 24, um, verse 10 says, if you fail under pressure, your faith is small. Mm. Wow. That's Proverbs powerful. 24, verse 10. It says, if you fail under pressure, your wow. faith is small. Wow. I took that um, rhetorically speaking because the Lord says. The Bible says faith without works is dead, yeah. all right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not, not seen. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to understand the price or the cost of the oil that I carry, my faith has to go beyond what I see. Yes, yes. My faith has to be strong enough to believe the untraceable. Mm. My faith has to be strong enough not to fail me in the pandemic based on what I may see in the reality, based on what I may feel emotionally, based on what the enemy may, may want to distract me yeah. regarding what, I, what God promised me in private, but it does not manifest publicly. Mm. He says, if my if. If I fail under pressure, sometimes it's doing the pressure that the oil is created. Yes. <laughs> you know, talk about the cost of the oil, but I believe, honestly, anointed with my anointed self, I believe <laughs> that um, in the midst of pain, purpose is revealed. Yeah. Ooh. And so many of times we don't know the oil that we carry until we're under pressure. Anything that's under pressure, watch this. That means anything that's under it is being squeezed. Ooh. Anything that's under it is being weighted down. Mm. And so sometimes we have to become in a weighted place, a pressure place for what's in us, which is the oil to screw out. <laughs> Ooh, that was so loaded. You said purpose <laughs> is revealed in the midst of pain. Oh my gosh. That yeah. oh, oh my gosh. And so what what is happening is is that God is trying to reveal things to us in the yeah. midst of whatever the yeah. tribulation, the situation, the circumstance is. And yeah. so you said that Proverbs, you said if what was it? You have little faith if you if what Proverbs 24 and 10 says, if you fail under pressure, you fail. your faith is too small. Oh, <laughs> if you That's fail in the under version. pressure. Oh, my God. See, do yeah. preach. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But if you fail under it, your faith is small. And you were talking about reveal. You know, if you define the word reveal, reveal is defined as um, to manifest. Yeah. Reveal is defined as um, um, being seen, the secrets, things that have not been known, the things that have not been spoken mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. And in order for something to be revealed, it has to be exposed. And so when we're talking about the cost of our anointing, um, what does that look like? That means there are things that God will reveal to us. Yeah. And there's God that God, things that God will reveal out of us, meaning what's in me. The things that qualify you to become anointed, the things that nobody knows you've gone through to be Lady T. You know, nobody knows the things that God has had to um, strip you from, walk you out of, yes, disconnect God. you from. But watch this. It was through the revealing that you found your purpose. Through the revealing, you found your anointing. You would have known mm. how powerful you were if you had not been under the pressure, which pushed out the pain. Yes. You better preach now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So we're talking about this pressure. We're talking about pain. We're talking about purpose and just giving birth to something that is far bigger than us. Uh, yeah. You know, and what has been one of your biggest pressure points, biggest challenges this year? And how have you overcome that pressure of that challenge? Um, this year, it, the world experience a global pandemic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would have to say I experienced my own personal pandemic. Mm, wow. I say that because if you know what a pandemic is, it is something that comes from out of nowhere. It's unexpected. Yeah. It's something that's challenging. It forces you to lock within a place where you have to find your strength. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to find your ability ability to practice what you've been preaching. Mm. And so I experienced my own personal pandemic um, and I'm still literally coming out of that pain of it. 
um, from July the 6th through the 17th, I found myself in Emory University Hospital experiencing a personal pain that just came upon me from nowhere. And so the challenge of that was, even to today, I'm literally still on bed rest, but I'm here with you. Um, mm -hmm. But the challenge of it was, how do you believe in the God that permits what you don't like? Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. And so I was challenged to move in. I'm challenged right now in the maceration of my anointing to say, I trust God even when I don't like what God does. Ooh. <laughs> you that say is when you become, yeah, that is when you have to really be anchored in God. Like the scriptures, it's like the tree that's planted um, by the rivers of living water that will not be moved. And so I found myself in the masturbation of who God says I am, that I know I am, that in the midst of experiencing a life and death situation, I had to be reminded, sis, watch this, that even through the pain, I'm a prophet. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> in the midst of the pain, I'm a prophet. And so I now cannot rely on wait on, consult people on what was happening in my life. Mm. I had to speak to, even laying on my bed of affliction, I'm having to speak to the pain of my body mm. so that the revelation of my anointing won't die. Oh, Ooh. God. <laughs> I'm okay. having to be... I, yeah, I'm having to be challenged in a place where I'm being stretched. Watch this. Not stretched to preach because I can do that. Mm -hmm. Not stretched to prophesy because I'm called to do that. Mm -hmm. But stretched to just believe that God is still able. Yes. 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 That's been my challenge. Um, and every day I'm reminded that um, even though he slayed me, I'm going to trust him. Don't trust him. Oh, yes, yeah, so I trust him on my bed of affliction. I'm trusting him right now, even though I'm having to face the doctors on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting that what God, the prophetic word that God spoke over my life, mm -hmm. it will not die in the pandemic, and neither will my anointing. Listen, I got a part right here. You said, trust him even when you don't like what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many people around the world have an issue with this right here? Yeah. Like we don't like what God is doing right now. We don't yeah. even we 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 and so instead of trusting him, we okay, there are a few things that happen. We fall away from it. That's right. Or we help him out. That's right. Like I'm finna help you out because you know you're not doing what I need when I need and how I need it as quickly as I need it. There you go. So yeah. so there are there are things that happen in that process that we begin to fall away. Our faith, our faith gets crushed. And yeah. then and, and, and we begin to doubt that God even cares. We begin to doubt that God even exists for real. Like, oh, yeah. I, I'll give you a specific time for me. Uh, I was sharing with you a time in my life where I was going through something when it came to having babies and I had this internal bleeding going on and uh, my life was at risk. I was they thought they didn't know if I was going to make it. And when yeah. I came out of the emergency surgery, when I came out of being okay, it was like I was okay physically, but I wasn't okay spiritually and mentally. Yes. One of the things that I said was, and I remember this so vividly, I said, God, I'm going to pray for everybody else because it seems like you answer my prayer when I pray for them. I said, but when it comes to me, you don't answer my prayer. So I don't feel like I should be praying for me because wow. my prayers are not being answered as quickly as I would like for them to be. Or, or if, if you're answering my prayers, why yeah. would you allow me to go through this sickness? Why would you allow me to go through this storm? So God, I'm going to pray yeah. for them, but I can't pray for me no more. And, and, and I went yeah. through that. I 
felt every ounce of the depression. I felt every ounce of the pain. I felt every yeah. ounce of, I felt like I was being rejected by God. I felt like God loved everybody else more than he loved me. I, I was like, God, I'm the one sitting here fasting, praying, declaring, and decreeing. I said, but they're getting blessings that they don't even ask for. While I'm wow. in my sick bed oh. and I'm, I'm going through the storm and the trial, the tribulation and the situation. And so I went through a time yeah. of heaviness where I was like, do I help God out? Do I, uh, I, I fell away. It wasn't like I, I, I didn't completely turn my back on God, but I fell away from the faith because my faith wasn't as strong as it used to be for me and for my house and for my hands. And, yeah. for, and I, I fell away yeah. and I felt a void in my life uh, where it was just like, okay, I didn't have the, like what you're saying, like trust him even when you don't like what he was doing, like what he's doing. I, I didn't yeah. feel like I could trust God. And it took me yeah. six to eight months to get back in a place where I felt like my trust was restored. And you know how, I, and I gotta give this quick testimony. My trust got restored when God reminded me that he was the one that allowed me to get through the emergency surgery. When he was the one that allowed, allowed my life to be saved when the doctors thought I was gonna be dead and gone. He was the one that allowed my body to still be intact. It was like, God let me go and through this depression for as long as I, you know, long as he just let me go on. But then one day it was like you have this great big epiphany. It's like God just shows up and be like, now, listen, I was the one that brought you this for. I was the one that saved you, that healed you, that delivered you. Yeah. I'm the reason why you can stand here and do what you're doing. And, and it was like, I was like, God, oh, my goodness forgive me i didn't like what you was doing what you did but i accept your will and when i accept yeah. your will i'm letting you know that i trust you that i know that yeah. your will for me is better than my will for me and i know there is purpose in the pain there is purpose in the struggle there is purpose yeah. in the heartache and so you said so much that just took me back to that moment where i wasn't as strong as you this was many years ago of course but i remember i, I if i could have had that that you have right now oh my goodness i wouldn't have went into the depression i wouldn't have went into yeah. that for eight uh, prophet is eight months darkness wow. was all around me i mean it was so dark and so heavy but yeah I, I, you know I, you. Um, I'm, I was listening to you and i'm reminded of what paul said in in this word paul said I've learned how to be a base mm -hmm. and abound. Mm -hmm. He said, I learned how to cover me in one. Learning is the thing that's being teachable. Yeah. You know, there are some things that God just has to instruct us through. Yes. What our powerful anointing says, it's <laughs> nothing like having to learn something. How do you learn how to trust God in sickness when you go through sickness and he brings you out? Yes. You know, so I've many a times, um, I believe for myself, my personal experience has been um, the revelation that God gives me. And the revelation always matches. It, 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 it always defines this moment in my life that says, whatever is revealed, God will give me a revelation behind it. Mm. And sometimes it's not my facts that I have to face. It's my faith that I have to watch. Ooh, it yeah. is my faith yeah. that I have to watch. See, many a times our, our facts deter us. Yeah. That means I know the word, I'm more than a conqueror. He's going to heal me. Those are the facts, yeah. all right? But sometimes you have to get a revelation even through the facts. Even though I'm suffering, my bank account is zero, the revelation of the fact is God shall supply my every need. Yes, yes, yes. So when Paul said, I've had to learn this, there are many things that God is teaching us even now. For my personal situation, God is teaching me when I can't be out on the road preaching. I'm used to being in three cities in a week. I'm now shut down. Mm. That was the first part of the pandemic where my schedule was full, all my plans. But watch this. The enemy has plots, but God has a plan. Mm. So even in the plot <laughs> of the enemy, the plan of God is, watch this, the fact and the revelation goes back to, watch this. Yes, you cannot be on the road preaching. Yes, you cannot be doing um, what you felt was the plan of God. But watch this, even in the midst of the plan, the plot of the enemy was to kill my life. But the mm. Father said, I'm going to spare your life because mm. I have a plan that's bigger than the plot. You are going to learn, Paul, how to <laughs> suffer. 
for need and want. Yes. Yeah, you're going to learn today, okay? Today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I tell, yeah. you, I tell you, experience has taught me so much. Uh, yeah. Like just just seeing God move in so many different ways and, and, and just showing his glory in so many different ways. It's taught me so yeah. much. And instead, what I've learned is that over the years I've grown, like that was like the first major thing that I've ever gone through with God. Like that I can recall was when I, my life was at risk and I was yeah. able to make it through. And so that right there, everything that came after that was like, oh, I can, I can handle this. I mean, yeah. I, I was literally on my deathbed, you know, yeah. some time ago, and now God has, has placed me somewhere else. And so I want to encourage those that are listening. You're listening to us. We are mighty women of God, anointed and appointed. Yeah, doing all yeah. of that stuff. But there, God, God is not a respect of persons. And so he's checking our faith, just like he's yeah. checking your faith. He's saying, daughter, do you really believe that I am that I am? Son, yeah. do you really believe that I can make a way? Or are you doubting? Yeah. Are you in that realm of doubt at where, where you have disbelief going and where you have your stutter stepping through what I told you to do? You know, yeah. what God just showed me, you know how people in the spirit, we begin to double dutch. You're like, yeah. one minute I'm here, one minute I'm there, one minute. Okay, I believe God. No, I don't. I believe God. No, I don't. And God is saying that many of us in this time of pandemic are, are so unstable. Like so many yeah. people have become so unstable in their ways and that faith yeah. and that trust is not where it, where it used to be. And so God is saying, okay, for those of you out there that's listening, analyze what your faith level is right now in this season. If God is looking for it to be here, but you're down here, then that's where you have to be real. And that's one of the things that I had to have a come to Jesus meeting. I had to be real with myself or where I was with God, what I was believing God for. Uh, if I was really who I said I was, you know, we yeah. said, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I trust God. You know, God has called me to do this, 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 this. But then when it's time to step out on the water we like oh whoa whoa you know wow. so yeah. are we who we say we are are we the ones that that really know him as the i am that i am the jehovah jireh the provider the jehovah rapha yeah. the one that's gonna heal and all of that stuff so this is yeah. just you know this is where we're at right now you said your own personal pandemic but that's so many people's testimony right now that everybody's going through some kind of personal pandemic something is going on in their life where they're having to fight to get yeah. to, them, to that level they're having to fight to win and so Absolutely. i'm just declaring yeah. this is our winning season <laughs> regardless absolutely. absolutely right before um right before i went into the hospital on july the 9th the last word that i spoke was um i'm going to prosper in a pandemic and my faith is going to stand through famine Mm, um, that's good. And I did not quite understand um, what the father was doing, what he was saying. But you just said something as far as walking on the water with Peter. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that you said that it's like my mind, my spirit was just leaping and jumping. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I understand even now about our faith, um, sometimes it's through the stretching that our faith is fine tuned. Mm, that's good. Uh, you know, our faith is like a rubber band. Mm -hmm. You don't really know how far your faith can go until it's stretched. Mm -hmm. Many a times as a rubber band, it can stay comfortable if it's in a stable position. Uh -huh. But when you begin to stretch that rubber band back, you begin to see not only the quality of what it's made out of, but the power of the stretch. Ooh. There's a power in the stretch of your faith. And sometimes you don't know how, how stable your faith is, how strong your faith is until he says, get out on the water. Why this and then you see yourself walking walking on the water was not the faith move i know a lot of people say he moved by people he wanted to know he operated in faith when he first agreed to step out the boat mm, yes <laughs> he did you know because it was a toy 
It was the choice. Your faith moves in your cho- in your choice. Your faith is operating in your decision. That's why the enemy tries to attack us so because he knows when we have a made up mind. Yeah. He knows when you yeah. say, you know what? I know God told me to step out and do this. He doesn't wait until you step out before you move. No, he tries to stop you in your decision making to mm. make you doubt it's not time. He make you doubt it's not going to happen. To make you doubt I'm not qualified. Mm. So he attacks your faith, not even in your movement. He attacks your faith in your decision making. <laughs> That's why the enemy is so mad with many of us now. Because if he could have killed us before we made the move, he he, he tried to sabotage us in our thinking. Mm-hmm. And so when our thinking elevated, then our move began to our faith began to move forward. Mm, that's good. That is, that is the capacity of our faith being stretched. Our faith is stretched during personal times like this, whereas everything that you preach. You thought you already lived out, but then he takes you back to another part of the text to make you get a different revelation of what he really said concerning your life. And then Mm -hmm. your life will become the faith and the evidence that if God did it for me, he has no respect to person. Yes, that's so good. That is so good. And and what you said was so so impactful because I think, you know, you was like, Peter had to, he had to first think it, right? Everything begins with a thought. So if yeah. a man think it, so is he. So if you think you can, you're probably right. If you think you can't, you're probably right. So right. we have to begin first to ignite our thinking to the level of faith that God is challenging us to go to. So that is just, it is so powerful, uh, but so simple at the same time. Oh, yeah. you mean I just got to change my mind? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, the greatest, the greatest sabotagers and assassinators of our destiny is not other people. The greatest mm-hmm. sabotage and the great assassin is self-thinking. The way you think yourself out of the ability to move forward. The way you think yourself out of what God has said concerning you. The fact is that you don't think yourself that way. Mm-hmm. You don't see yourself that way. That's why the Bible says, cast down every imagination that yeah. exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It is what he spoke the original plan and purpose for your life. Yes. You know, if you don't think the plan will fall into the plot. Mm, wow. <laughs> if you don't think the plan of God, which is what he says, he has a plan concerning our life to give us an expected end. The problem is we want the expected end, but not the process to get to the beginning. Mm, my, my. <laughs> that's good. And that's, that's our truth. You know, that's our, the the truth of so many of us around here. And so I thank God for you, woman of God. I thank God for this impartation that you have given unto us on today. It has been extremely powerful. You, you just really gave us so many yummy nuggets to chew on uh, for a while, right? So I was trying to jot stuff down while I was listening to you and just, just take it all in. But if you could leave somebody with one final thing before you leave, what would you impart into them this final nugget that from Prophetess Melissa? For those that are listening today, um, I would say unto them what the Father has been speaking to me for from July the 9th through the 17th, laying in the hospital. Um, I got released from the hospital on the 17th. So I was in the hospital for how many days? Mm-hmm. And from that point on, since being released, I have not been able to um, do anything. I've literally had to have help in my home um, because I've been on bed rest. Mm-hmm. Um, but what the Lord has been speaking to me is what I speak to you today, that it's not over. This is just the beginning. Yes. Pray for me, this is not your exit, but your entrance. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? This is not the end of the thing. This is the beginning of a thing. And sometimes you have to understand when God begins to do something new, uncommon, unfamiliar, it's because he's trying to grow you. And so I understand in being uncomfortable, it's because I've maximized where I was before July the 9th. Mm. What does that mean? We say we go from glory to glory. He says in Isaiah, I'm going to do a new thing in you. Can you not perceive it? Mm. Sometimes it's the perception of what he's doing new that looks like the old. Wow. What am I saying? I'm saying to you that it's not over. This is just the beginning. I'm saying to you that what you are experiencing right now, whether it's publicly or privately, 
when the father says, I'm going to do something new in your life, mm -hmm. you have to understand in order to do something new, you have to experience something lost. You have to experience mm -hmm. a form of disconnection because why? You got to have wow. capacity for the new. In order for me to get a new wardrobe, I got to make room in my closet for the new. Yes. And so sometimes the new thing looks like subtraction. Sometimes the new looks like sickness. Wow. Sometimes the new looks like betrayal. But you have to understand when God has spoken a word concerning your life, watch this. He declared the end from the beginning. This is just a part of the new. I'm telling you, you are going to live, you are going to see, you're going to have, because why? The God that you serve, Yahshua, he's bigger than any plot of the enemy, yes. any scheme of the enemy, and I am declaring even now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So I'm telling you, get ready to live and experience the glory and the prosperity and the fresh anointing and the awakening that is taking place in your life right now this is just a setup for your comeback this yes. is just a setup for your bounce back and sometimes you don't know how to bounce back until you've been low and mm. i've been in a low place there's people that have been in a low place but can i tell you we shall not remain in lodabar we should yes. not remain in lodabar. we are in our goshen and because god is resetting us because god is realigning us because god is realigning us there is recompense that has your name on it mm. and I am declaring today, this is not the end for you. This mm. is just the just beginning, the beginning. <laughs> of your new chapter. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was powerful. That Amen. was powerful. And you just confirmed something in me, what you just said, because I just got on uh, here actually this week and I ministered on the eighth month and what God was doing in this eighth month. And one of the things that God said about the newness in this eighth month was going to make many uncomfortable. It was going wow. to make many of us uncomfortable because of the things that was happening. But God said that discomfort was going to bring elevation and it was wow. going to bring next level. But we had to be able to go through the discomfort, to go through yeah. whatever it was, because what God is doing in this eighth month is repositioning us for a whole yeah. other level of his glory. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that was yeah. just it was just confirmation uh, of something. So you are you are just phenomenal woman of God. So what I would just tell everybody before you leave how they can follow you, how they can be a part of what you're doing, uh, connect Thank with you. you in any way, anything. If you have something going, I don't know if you're restarting something. I have something coming up soon. How can they connect and be a part? Um, well, they can follow me on all social media platforms, Melissa Williams. Um, Melissa Fambi Williams um, to contact us. They can also email my assistant at Melissa WMS Ministry CP1 at gmail.com. Um, and they can follow me on Facebook, um, Instagram. I'm on social medias. Um, right now, I am in what you call prophetic incubation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't call it bed rest, I call it a prophetic incubation. And so I'm just believing that when God releases me, to come out of this, um, what he's pouring inside of me even now, I'm going to do greater. I'm going to be um, the yeah. voice in the global pandemic that God is raising up during yeah. this time. So, yeah, they can just follow me on all social media platforms. Um, when I return, I'll be back on Facebook doing my two different episodes that I'm doing. Um, also ministering. I think I'm in um, I'm in uh, St. Louis. I'm also in September. So uh -huh. we're, we're, we're going to be back out here. We're just waiting for God to release us. <laughs> Amen. And for seed sowing, we want to sow a seed into you. Um, what's your cash app? How can we uh, sow a seed into your life? Sure. Um, my cash app is going to be dollar sign MWM1. Dollar sign MWM1. Okay. Awesome size. Well, thank you again, woman of God. I am so I'm so full right now of this oh. whole episode. <laughs> I'm honored to be with you. Sis. Amen. You really gave us some things that you want to look in so that we could be better out. 
Amen. And for all of you guys that are watching us, if please make sure to follow Prophetess Melissa Williams again on, on Facebook, Melissa Fumby Williams. Uh, follow her. Look at everything she's doing from her boutique to publishing company to all the book writers out there. Um, everything, all her books that are on Amazon. Please make sure to take heed everything that we've talked about today and make sure to share this broadcast because I'm telling you, somebody needs to hear this on today. Now, this podcast will be edited and put on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud on um, in about a week or so. So if you've not subscribed to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, look for the interview with Trish M. And subscribe, rate, review, give us a five star so we can just go to the mountaintop on Apple, okay? <laughs> amen, <laughs> amen. So thank you again. Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray that you have a phenomenal day and tune in next week with me on the interview with your girl Trish M for another phenomenal episode.